We've got a great story, but we're missing the first paragraph in this story. It's just that, that bit got torn off. So you've got a great story from then on, but you don't know what happened right at the beginning, the yeah. first page. Um, well, then our, our, our first question really is, do we have to have a beginning? I mean, it, it's nice to have one. All stories start with once upon a time. Um, <laughs> or d and do we need one? Do, do we need a first cause, or are some scientists happy that we don't have one? And I is our preference for having a beginning mm -hmm. because you lot have inherited the, that sort of myth structure from from Christianity? I mean, I, I don't think the, the Indians are too worried about this, mm. you know, the Hindus. They're the cyclic Hindus. Yeah. Roger, do you think we, um, we, we have to have a beginning, or is it just a, a, an article of faith? Well, currently, I, my scheme does not have a beginning, but the beginning... The, that we think of as the Big Bang was the continuation of something which didn't look like a Big Bang, but was a previously expanding what I call an eon. And these went on, as far as the theory goes, indefinitely. So there was no beginning in this scheme. Of course, that might, might not be right, but I think there are some observations, very recent observations, which I don't see how you can explain on the basis of current inflationary theory. And I rather disagree about inflation being a nice, beautiful theory, it's a very artificial theory where you have to introduce concepts which ha are invented specifically for the theory. They don't come from anything else. Mm. Well, just before we get on to that, mm. when you say an eon, uh, have I got the right picture that basically <laughs> you're saying before our universe, our current, what we're before in, eon, there was one language, before yes. it, yes. and it, it sort of came to an end, and then there was another one. Well, you see, it doesn't come to one. the end. You see, well it's an old idea that the universe expanded and then collapsed again. So we're, we're dispensing with beginnings and endings. Well, if you like. Uh, let, let me just go back to the old idea. You see, this was one of the very old, um, originally, right after Einstein produced his theory, Friedman solved the equations, and one of the solutions was a universe which expanded and collapsed like that, and it went through these phases. Now, this is very different because it never collapses, and that's what people have trouble Swallowing, you see. How can this universe, which is expanding, getting rarefied, cold, and all that, become this big bang, which is very hot and compressed? And they look completely different. Mm. But they're not completely different if you don't have mass. Because it's a funny idea, but in this model, when you don't have clocks around, which you don't when you don't have mass, then big and small become equivalent. It's what you call conformal equivalent. Large things and small things, you can't tell them apart if you don't have a scale, which tells the difference. And the scale gets lost when you don't have particles with mass. <coughs> and so when that scale is lost, this expanding, indefinitely expanding universe becomes a big bang of the next... Even era. though it was very large once upon a time. Yes. Well, when you, you see, lose track of what large means. When you've only got photons running around, there's no meaning to saying it's large or small. The equations become identical. I agree it's a high, hard idea to swallow. And uh, it, it's, it's not. Thank you, Roger. It's, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, absolutely. It's a difficult um, idea to swallow. And this is probably I, why people have a lot of trouble swallowing it. I, I, yeah, I'm glad <laughs> yes. to hear it's not just me. <laughs> yes. Uh, are either of you two willing to swallow this idea, or would you mm. rather. You, you look like you, you want to say something. <laughs> no. I, I agree with almost everything Roger said. <gasps> <it's>, uh, <laughs> 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 um, in terms of uh, your question, can we do with a universe that didn't have a beginning? Certainly we can, but we observe that that's not the case with our universe. We know our universe at the beginning, so we don't get to have a choice on that. And uh, in terms of uh, the theory of cosmic inflation, explaining many of the features we observe in our universe, I, I did state before that it's a beautiful and natural theory. <laughs> that's true, except that it has uh, a very, very unnatural feature, which is the one that uh, Roger pointed out in the 70s, I believe, that the chance of starting a universe with uh, high energy inflation is incredibly small. It's 1 to the power 10, and, and we've had this discussion with Roger before, and he corrected me. I said 10 to the power 10 to the power 122, and he said, no, well, 123. Doesn't <laughs> <laughs> make any difference. So that, that makes a huge difference. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. But uh, the, the chance <coughs> to start at our universe with, with a universe like ours seems uh, nearly zero. And, and, and in that sense, yes, I completely agree with Roger that that's a very unnatural beginning to have, a very special beginning to have. But... 
that argument is, is a consequence of uh, the second law of thermodynamics. Right. We, we can turn it around and, and say our universe started, started at an incredibly small entropy or at an exquisitely ordered state, at a very special state. So always the, the problem of the origin of the universe, whether it's via cosmic inflation or via some other mechanism or, or some other theory, that problem will always be tied up with uh, the issue of uh, the second law of thermodynamics, by which entropy always grows. So whatever beginning we can conceive of, in the future, the entropy of that state would have grown. So that beginning would, will always be special relative to some final state. And, and that is the part where I'm not sure I agree with Roger any further. Um, I, I like his, uh, his theory of uh, eons and, and cycles in the universe, but I, I have not thought carefully on how that evades the second law of thermodynamics.